We have uh, many generations represented here, uh, but I'm going to um, mention the boomers because I am a boomer. And um, for boomers, we grew up in a church uh, and we were formed uh, in this way. The laity are to pray, pay, and obey. That was the church that the boomers grew up in. And the reason why I say that is because there was a time that the church, the work of the church, was done by priests and religious. They did the work. And the laity simply prayed, paid, and did what they were told to do, obey. <laughs> and that's what it meant to be a good Catholic and to go to Mass on Sunday. But at the time, every parish had three to four priests. And just about every parish had a convent with six to eight religious sisters. So it, you know, it was the priests and the religious sisters, they did the work. Well, today we have uh, the call of Peter, Andrew, James, and John. And uh, Jesus says, come follow me and they follow the Lord. And all of us are called to follow the Lord. All of us here are called to serve the Lord. And um, the reason why I say that is because the one thing I want to do today uh, is to highlight our amazing staff. But before I do, um, it was about 40 years ago when I was at uh, St. Barbara Church in Santa Ana, and I was a seminarian at the time, and Father Richard Delahunte, who was the pastor of St. Barbara at that time, and later pastor of our uh, neighboring parish here, uh, St. Nicholas, he had hired someone to do a Bible study. He had hired a lay person. And I remember that I, along with many people, were shocked uh, by that hire. Why did he need to do this? Well, you didn't have to go very far. Because over time, there are fewer and fewer priests and fewer and fewer religious. Now... Last week, somebody, and this is the truth, somebody had used the word shortage of priests. I said, we don't have a shortage of priests. No, because God is not about scarcity. God is not about shortage. God is about plenty, and God is about abundance. Uh, what we have is we have fewer priests and fewer religious, but God will always, always provide for his people, for his bride, for his church. There will always be priests and religious to serve God's family. But I think what God is doing is he's calling us the baptized. He's calling you the baptized to be actively engaged in the work of the church. And it's not that laity were not actively engaged in the church in the 50s and 60s, uh, but they were kind of minimal. But now, we don't have church without the active participation of the baptized, without the laity. Without the laity, we have no church. And, and the laity is called to do the work of, of the church. And if it wasn't for volunteers, we wouldn't have a church. And so the church is, shall we say, ran by volunteers. But there are men and women who feel the call to uh, enter into full-time ministry. They're not called to uh, priesthood, to celibacy. They're not called to religious life. They're called to the sacrament of marriage. They're called uh, to a dedicated single life. And they are called to full-time ministry in the church. And these are um, uh, dedicated people, and they make up our staff. And part of what a staff person does is they get the volunteers, a lot of volunteers. 
and they uh, and you get a lot of volunteers to do a little in a coordinated way. And who coordinates it? The minister, the full time paid minister. And so uh, our staff, uh, like all parish staffs, they have families, they have mortgage, they have to put food on the table, and um, they are ministers really at a great cost. Because out in the work world, uh, they would uh, make three times as much as they are making working for church world. Uh, but they do it because they love the church. They're passionate and they love the Lord, and, uh, and they are called to do this ministry. So, on this weekend, I want to highlight our staff. And so the very first person, because sometimes people say, well, uh, um, we know that there's a, a, a parish staff, but who are they and where are they? But the very first person I'm going to introduce, and there are six, uh, we're a small staff here, and the very first person is our director of music and liturgy, and that is Chris Boyle. So Chris, come on out so that we can see you and know who you are. And the most important thing that we do as a, uh, a faith-filled people is that we gather on Sunday to praise and to worship our God, to hear his word and to be fed by, uh, by our God. Uh, his body and blood, soul and divinity, we come here to receive the Eucharist. And so uh, Chris's job really is to enhance our time together uh, with music, and he also works with all who are involved in liturgy, from our extraordinary ministers of Holy Communion, to our lectors, to our hospitality, to our altar care, so on and so forth, and he puts together the music and works with all our volunteers, and he continues the wonderful tradition of music that we have here at Corpus Christi. And along with that, he, with uh, George, George is number three in terms of introduction, is they overlook the technology. So all these speakers and wires and in the grand hall, we've mounted screens so that when we come back, you know, uh, uh, the words will be up on screens as we go paperless. They've done all of that. So thank you, Chris. And number two, is uh, Miss Maria, Maria Incion. As you know, she's in the back now with our children, and she is the director of faith formation for children. And I'm not going to mention everything that she does, uh, but she's doing really an outstanding job, and uh, so she prepares our children for the sacraments, reconciliation, first communion. We continue to have fish on Wednesday afternoon. It's virtual. It's Zoom. She's preparing the next group now for reconciliation and communion. So during the summer, we celebrated First Communion, and it looks like we're going to have our second First Communion, but this time in May outdoors. She also oversees uh, our special needs, uh, our children, and prepares them for the sacraments. She does CLO, which is Children's Liturgy of the Word, and she is the point per uh, person for our purpose-driven ministry. Number three. And that would be the director of youth ministry, George. George, where are you? There you are. And you see George, he, he's, uh, he's roaming around. He oversees our technology. and He's trying to build up a, a tech team. So that is what he does in addition to uh, youth ministry. And so uh, he oversees our junior high program known as The Edge. Uh, he meets with them Zoom. Uh, and uh, they do uh, uh, their uh, gatherings together, their edge nights together, and then we have our youth ministry known as Life Teen, and so we have young people preparing for the Sacrament of Confirmation. He's also doing a Bible study with our young people and, uh, and is very involved also in Purpose Driven as well. So thank you, George. Well, in our, in our parish, you know, there is the business side uh, in church world. Uh, we are, uh, one, I was once asked, so what do you do, Father? And I was trying to think of a way to make this person understand what I do. And I said, I oversee a million-dollar business. 
And that was the end of the discussion. He, he understood it since he ran his own business. But there is that business side, and so uh, the Sunday offertory along with the pastoral services appeal, we're a million dollar business. And so you need somebody uh, who uh, keeps an eye on that, make sure that the I's are dotted and the T's are across, and, um, and she also overlooks our safe environment, and that is Susie Hayes. So Susie Hayes, please stand. Nicely done. Four down and two to go. So uh, number five. This is how my father used to refer to us. He would refer to me as number two, okay? And my sister Beth is number seven, okay? So number five is Alyssa A. Eugenio. So where is Alyssa? There she is. And she is our Parish Life Director, and as Parish Life Director, uh, as volunteers come forward and are trying to find a, a place where they fit in terms of how can we help, uh, Alyssa is very much a part of directing them. And she, along with um, Miss Maria, uh, they oversee uh, the... Um, uh, website and the daily check-in. She also does all the mailing. So those of you that received the Matthew Kelly book uh, uh, shortly after Christmas and before Epiphany, the over 400 books that we sent out, she made sure that that happened. We're going to be doing a Lenten mailing with the little black book, and uh, she's going to make sure that that happens. She oversees uh, the pastoral services appeal and on and on and on. So she does a wonderful job. So thank you, Alyssa. So those are our five full-time staff members. And then we have uh, our, our one part-time uh, staff member. Uh, he's retired. Uh, uh, and and um, so that helps uh, on one hand. Uh, and uh, But he does more than part-time. Uh, he's been a part of the parish from the beginning, has a, a passion for our campus, our facility, keeps an eye on, on all of that. He's the one that calls the painters, the plumbers, the electricians. Uh, he's the one that says it's time for us to address that. And that's Kevin McGinn. So Kevin, come on out. He's our facility manager. Okay. So very good. So what am I leading up to? This is what I'm leading up to. Last year, when we entered into COVID-19 and we had to really take a look at the budget, the Finance Council and I made the decision that we would do everything necessary to keep our staff because they're family, but it's important that we be church and not do church. Doing church is robbing Peter to pay Paul. Doing church is how are we going to survive? How are we going to get through this? But being church uh, is what we've been doing. Uh, the faith life of the parish continues um, and uh, so on and so forth. And I really believe that when we come out of COVID-19, there's going to be a surge. There are going to be people turning uh, to the church. Uh, and, uh, and we need our staff in place to do that. And so um, it's all about being church. And so this is the one thing I want you to remember, okay, over the next couple of weeks. PSA is Corpus Christi's lifeline. It's as simple as that. PSA enables us to be church. And what is PSA? It is the pastoral services appeal. It is an annual appeal uh, by the bishop to support uh, diocesan-wide ministries that no one parish can possibly take on. But all 62 parishes participate. All 62 parishes uh, uh, partake of the uh, PSA budget. And uh, But once we reach our assessment, all monies that come to us after we reach our diocesan assessment comes right back to us and enables us to do ministry. And we cannot do ministry without our staff. Enables us to take care of our campus and our facility. So this is what I am inviting you to do. We need to match what we did last year. 
We have to at least do that. If we continue to, um, um, if we continue to, um, around our Sunday offering and we match last year's PSA, I do not foresee a special appeal. And I know it's been a really, really tough time on many families. I understand that. I get it. I also understand that some are not going to be able to participate because their whole situation is different this year than last year. Family first. Absolutely family first. And Corpus Christi is your faith family. And just as one's family is one's priority, so is one's parish family. But those of you that pledged last year, if you're able to pledge again this year and match, perhaps do a little bit more um, than you did last year, oh, God love you. And, uh, and I'm going to do a little bit more uh, than I did last year. Those of you who were not able to participate last year, please, we need the participation of everyone. So I'm almost done. <laughs> on Friday, I did the PSA mailing. So if you didn't receive it yesterday, you're going to receive it this week. Please read the letter. And, uh, and attached to that is the brochure that explains what it is and a pledge envelope. And so I invite you to join me next week in coming forward and placing your envelope in the regular offertory basket. Uh, but if you're not here next week, you can bring it the following Sunday. If it's easier for you, there's so many options. You can go online, uh, you can mail it in, uh, or you can drop it off uh, during the week at the parish. But please join me uh, in supporting uh, this campaign because it enables us to be church, to be church. And um, so with that, PSA, it's as simple as this. PSA is Corpus Christi's lifeline. Without it, we, we merely do church. With it, we are able to be church.